Hey everyone, it's Lisa. Welcome back to my channel. I am doing a really quick last minute order and forgot that my camera battery was dead, so I'm gonna do it on my phone. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I set up this design for a wedding charcuterie board. Super cute, and this is actually kind of thick. So we are going to set this up without the crumb tray on our Glowforge. So if you like this video, and if you're thinking about getting a Glowforge, you can click the link in my description and you can save up to $500 on a new machine. All right guys, I am in Silhouette Studio. I'm going to show you two designs that you can do for these boards. I think these are really great as housewarming gifts, of course, wedding gifts, and with Christmas coming up, I think these are perfect gifts that you can just crank out really quickly. If you're selling items, this is a great standard design. So we're gonna start off and I'm just gonna do it with me and my husband. So we are the pots. We are, I am not here for a discussion on do you do the apostrophe, where you do the apostrophe. I have chosen that I'm just going to do it this way. Now, this is something that I would confirm with your customer. Um, everyone's got a different preference. I I don't care, honestly, what the, the grammar rule is with this. So I'm going to do it like that. It might be right. It might be wrong. Let me know in the comments below what you think. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so I'm going to type this name. And so this first design that I'm doing, uh, I'm going to do the name in a font that I have called Huh Girls. It's such a silly name, but that's that's what it is. So we have the pots. And now I'm going to type Nick and Lisa. And depending on... Um, what this is for, you may want to do the bride first if it's a wedding gift. I like I like having Nick's name first, so you know it is what it is. Um, I have found that this font called Barlow Condensed works really well for this. I'm going to double click and Control A to select everything. I'm going to type this in all caps, Nick and Lisa. Um, I don't super love that, so I'm going to do, oops, I did a capital, Nick and Oh, I don't like that either. Let me go back. Sorry, guys. <laughs> All right, so we have our text right here. Let's fill this in black, and we'll adjust for sizing and everything shortly. Now, I'm going to grab this, Control-C, Control-V. That's to copy and paste. And now we're going to do the date. I'm still doing all caps, October 5th, 2013. Okay, so now we're going to make our adjustments to kind of make this look a little bit better. I'm not going to worry too, too much about the sizing quite yet. I'm just going to, you know, uh, scale this so I can see how it looks. So let's bring this up. And I am going to increase my character spacing over here on the right side. We're going to make this a little bit wider. I think when you space a little bit more with this font, it just looks nice. And we'll do the same right here. All right, so we have this set up like this. Um, let's make Nick and Lisa about the same. I'm going to make the date just a little bit smaller. Um, you know, hierarchy of importance. The last name is important for this and the first names are next and then the date. So let's go ahead and bring this down just a little bit more. And once you're happy with that, I'm going to select all of it right here by grabbing and clicking and dragging. I'm going to go to my quick access toolbar and this right here is to align center. So now you have this lined up like that. I can take my mouse and bring this down a little bit. And this is up to you how you want to space this. I'm happy with this. So it's not quite ready to send over to my machine. If you are familiar with using script fonts, you'll know that we have overlapping lines in here. Um, that means that these are letters that are making words, but if you look very closely, you'll see that the lines for each one is still in there. So if we were to engrave this, you'd have an empty space right there. We want to join this into one big shape. Right click and weld. Now you can see there are separate boxes for each of these. Welding will join things that have overlapping lines, but if there are no lines touching, they're separate objects. So I'm very quickly going to right click and group it. So now I'm all set right here. I just have one more thing that I'm going to do. Um, because I'm bringing this into Glowforge, I always like to convert all my text over to lines. That way if I open this in silhouette on another computer, whatever, I don't have to worry about if the font is installed. So I'm just going to click on my text right here and I'm going to right click convert to path. So essentially that says, hey, this isn't text. These are just shapes. Convert to path. If you uh, do videos with me pretty often, you'll notice I like to make things compound paths. Um, I'm doing it more basic this time. So convert to path is totally fine. Now I'm just going to select the whole thing, right click and group it together for ease of use. 
So we have it all like that. Now all I have to do is we're going to go to file, save selection. When you save it to your hard drive, just choose SVG in the, in the drop down, and you have an SVG file there. All right, so you can see I brought in my design to do a little test, and so it's scanning. So the charcuterie board is thicker than a half inch. What I did is I took these little like cheapy boards that I bought from the Target dollar spot and I lifted up my board with it. So I took out my crumb tray and I lifted my board so that uh, I was in the range for engraving. So the Glowforge can engrave things that are up to two inches thick and at the two inches, it is within a half inch of the laser. So you have something that is over half an inch tall um, on the glow forge it's up too high so basically my glow forge is about an inch tall so the top of my item has to be at the very least half an inch from the laser or at most two inches um so i lifted it up sorry if that was a weird explanation i got distracted but we'll see how it goes so since this is in here i'm going to use these three dots and set my focus i'm going to click right there on the board now because the glow forge uses a fisheye lens um, it will distort how it looks. So you need to focus on your material so that the software knows how far away your item is from the lens and then it can give you a better picture in here. So we're gonna let this focus and then work from there. All right, so you see that it's ready. Do you see how it adjusted just a little bit? So I brought in my text. I'm gonna bump it up just a little bit right here, kind of line it up. And I am using an, um, an engrave, so we're gonna do engrave. And then we're gonna do cutting board and then we have speed 1000, precision power 85. I'm actually gonna do full power, and I'm gonna save this as something else. So we're gonna do charcuterie, and I'm gonna put coded because this does have a coding on it. So save it. I also like to save these with the date that I do that because for me, I'm, I'm more about when I did something. So we have that set right here, we have it in there, so I can go ahead and print. Now this is going to process how long it's going to take for that engraving to take place. So we're gonna let that go. I have Glowforge Premium, so I'm in the fast lane. So uh, this will help me process a little bit faster than the typical person. And so this design is going to be nine minutes and 29 seconds. So I'm gonna hop over there. We're gonna start that. And after that, we'll have a finished product. Here it is guys, cute board. Uh, again, sorry about this camera at the end. It has been a day. My Glowforge wasn't working earlier today. So this is for a last minute wedding gift. They're literally gonna pick it up in like two seconds. And this is using some fonts. I'll link them in the description. And I use Silhouette Business Edition to create the design. I have linked where you can get that software. And if you're thinking about getting a Glowforge, you can use that link to save up to $500 on a new machine. And don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on the bell so you don't miss any more uploads. Thank you.